Um, I'm going to start off with the questions. So I'll start off with Sister Saba. Um, what do you enjoy most about your job? So what I really like about my job is the flexibility, the pay, and um, yeah, the thing, and you get to learn every day. So as a being working in data, what I'm able to do is look at like what's happening in the business, what kind of people are coming to the website, can we make any changes to the website to get more people to convert, get more money for the company. Uh, so the work I feel is really interesting where we have very open-ended questions and you have to look at, into data and try to answer it. And I really love math, so I think that it doesn't feel like work sometimes. You're investigating in data to find answers to these questions. And, um, and I also like the flexibility. So as a working mom, I'm able to bring the kids back at 3 o'clock, drop them off at 9 a.m. Like if there's a lot of flexibility. And I can work later in the day, later in the night if I have to, to finish up some job. So yeah, that's kind of the main reasons I really like it. Sure. Um, okay, so what do I love about my job? So I um, mentioned that I work with public school districts. Um, I actually am not math minded like all of my wonderful peers here. I love to read. And if you really love logic puzzles and reading and research analysis, writing, that is um, a good direction for you to explore the law. So that's what I do most of the time. I did love to argue when I was a teenager, what teenager doesn't, but um, my parents did not appreciate that much. They used to say, you should be a lawyer, and it was not a compliment. Um, but that wasn't, I did not go into law to argue for a living, and actually that's mostly not what lawyers do. They mostly read and research and write, but it is a client service profession, and who your clients are and what work you're doing for them is so different. It's a huge spectrum of legal services that are out there, and so I've done most of my career in public agencies, helping government function, helping schools function, and so what I love is helping out in the education field, but um, in my own way, because I actually tried to be a teacher, and it was not the best fit for me. I was first, I studied as an, a linguist, and I was an ESL teacher for a few years, and then I just felt restless. I wanted to go back to school, and I love to challenge my mind and just keep learning, so in the legal field, everything's constantly changing. So to give you an idea, um, I love the fact that I, I talked to two or three different school superintendents today about legal problems that are coming at them to help them solve those problems, and that's a great part of my job. And then I also received today about 1,500 pages of new regulations that the um, Federal Department of Education just released that I need to read this weekend. And I'm excited about that too, believe it or not. So um, that's a little window to what I, what I really enjoy. That sounds really interesting. One hundred. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. What I like about my job, um, I have a long history of uh, breast cancer in my family, and now that I work for a diagnostic company, trying to come up with our own gene sequencing instrument. There is direct application of what I'm working on to my very own life. So again, hopefully with the right intention, um, if the technology works, can help a lot of people, including myself. Um, so that's, that's the, the portion that's, I guess, giving me meaning in terms of what I do. I also um, manage a group of about six or seven engineers and scientists, and I also enjoy the aspect of trying to help them grow and develop and see where they want to grow. I only have one son myself, but having them in my team, sometimes it feels like I have more than just one. <laughs> so there's also the aspect that I enjoy, the, the people aspect of it. And one thing that I want to mention is it is also evolves over time. So when I was early on in my career, like all I want to do is like me, 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 like everything is all about me. And then 
um, up to a certain extent where, where I feel like, okay, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried that. Then I feel like I'm in a place where I can focus less on myself and focus on other people and where they want to grow and how can I help them get there. Okay, my turn. <laughs> okay, so for me, actually it's not job, it's my passion and hobby both. So from my initial day and my wife can tell more, sometimes I stop, forget to eat when I was doing coding in my early age and she sit to next to me to feed the food. Because I have a passion to do something which is extraordinary and solving a lot of people problems which they repeat every day. And I have a concept called nothing is impossible. So any problem comes, I just see the nature, how they are solving and try to translate to the world of computer. So I have some patents on different horrible algorithms. And when I came to US from India, I get opportunity to see the market more visibility from higher end because we have more customer focused discussions here. And we know where the world is moving and what people are looking for. So I really never think when I'm working, I'm working basically. When I'm not working, then I have to think what to do. So it's just other way. And, but I have other work too, like now my daughter is here for my other second job. But other than that, when I'm my office time, actually my office will tell me, take some break. And I have to tell them, if I take break, I will be not feeling well. Because if I not see my code one day, I feel something is missing my life. And if I go for vacation, I open my laptop to see two, three lines of code to feel happy. Just see I'm alive and I still know about something. Yeah, but I think one of the reason I choose this line because it's a problem solving line where you have really solving the people problem in right way and the way the automation is going on. So I just like it so community get help from what we are doing and helping on the software industry. Yeah, I think that's my hobby. <laughs> Um, we can see how you all really love what you do in your job and what like ex experiences in your teen years and basically things or characteristics about you shaped you into wanting to pursue this career. And I'll start off with... Uh... Okay. So I, one thing I want to share, like once you move on your career, you get more power, but it comes with a lot of responsibilities. Because when you're part of any world, right, any corporate world or any society, when people listen to you, that means you're also responsible to convey the right message. So the same thing translates to the job. When a lot of juniors coming under us, obviously they have a fresh mind. So they have good ideas and they have a lot of conflicting ideas. And all the bigger challenge, how to put everybody together as a team, because it's not a single man army work, right, it's a teamwork. And they are the patience really required, which we say, right, you should have a patience in life. So you really see patience when you come for a job, not in high school. <laughs> because high school, you have a freedom to think the way you want it. But in real world, you have to think for others before you yourself. And at the same time, you also make sure the right ball is not dropped. It means the right person idea has to be honored, not by the, you know, people say, I know this person, let me get my work out. And there my responsibility increase more to make things right work out because my company is looking for me. I am choosing the right one for the company or the people who is using that right. So I, I think other than that, I also felt one thing in my life. In when I was in high school and college, I have a number of ideas and I don't know where to focus on. Only thing I told myself is that if I like something, like a lot of kids like video games and my son, He's in college now. He's a first question is, I like video game. So I asked the question, how about if you are the creator of the video game? Can you think like that? It will be more enjoyable because you create and play, not play somebody else is created. So try to, I always think in the way, try to be other side of the table where you're creating, not using. Obviously, you need users, but to be a good career, try to be in creator side. Brother Bilal, do you mind uh, introducing yourself? Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Bilal Mojadidi. Uh, I'm a firefighter here with the San Francisco Fire Department. I've been a member here for about six years now. Do you want to talk about your other 
other business that you do, like the other work you're also doing uh, with Five Pillars, I think? Yes, uh, so I help uh, organize a, uh, a nonprofit called the Five Pillars, which basically uh, help the resettlement of new incoming refugees, um, as well as uh, I work with the American Red Cross. We have two different um, partnerships with Red Cross. One is a DAT team, which is a disaster action team, which helps relocate people who have gone through tragedies and emergency situations that have imminent needs, as well as their DHS team, which is disaster health services, to help these people that have gone through these emergencies to get them, this, if they have any prescription medication that's life-threatening or medical equipment or anything of that nature that, need, that they need help with. Currently now I'm working with a project with uh, a few of my friends and colleagues that I've run up with. Uh, we're called the Muslim First Responders. And the organization is built basically with uh, firefighters, police officers, doctors, nurses, uh, and other supporting roles. And our objective and goals are to go around and basically work with the youth and help people um, that are interested in these careers, but also bridge the gap between the Muslim community and... Yeah. One, maybe okay. you can answer one more question for us. Like, what do you enjoy the most about your job? The, the most I enjoy about my job is no day is the same. Every day is something new. It's a very fast-paced environment. Um, there's nothing routine about the job. Uh, you could be working with a brand new crew, you could be working a brand new call. No two calls are the same. Anytime the tones go out to an emergency, you don't know what to expect, you don't know what's going on. But the only beauty of it is that it's somebody's worst day and you're there to change that. And I think that's uh, a very, very um, positive role to have, especially uh, as Muslims, we, we aim to help people as much as we can. So be able, to be able to do it as a profession, I mean, to me, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's fun every day. Very good. Um, so Brother Bilal, we are all answering, so the panelists are answering the next question, which is, um, which, what advice would you give somebody who wants to take on that career? So maybe we'll go through a few more panelists and then come to you with that question. Okay, so just to confirm, you said what would somebody do to if they wanted to pursue this career? Exactly, yep. So, yeah, we'll come to you in just a few more panelists before we come to you. That's good. Um, I, I mean, the advice I would get if somebody that's interested in, in, in any kind of public service role, but for this instance, firefighting, is to really indulge yourself in your, in your city, in your neighborhood, where you grew up with, and understand if it's something, if it's a career that, that excites you. Um, it's a very, like I said, it's a very fast-paced job, but it's very enjoyable. There's a lot of positive, you know. Um, first thing foremost is, is the schooling. The schooling is, is not difficult, but it is tedious. Uh, it is a little bit uh, longsome, but that's what makes the job that much more enjoyable to know that you're working towards a career and not just a summer job or just a job till you get to where you want to be. Uh, the education is, it, it is not hard, but like I said, it is extensive, um, and you can go as far as you want to. Um, you can go and get into universities and get a bachelor's, a master's, and PhD in fire science uh, in emerg emergency management, or you can go and become a paramedic, uh, an EMT. Um, all of that has specific schooling, but if anybody that's interested in this career path, the first thing that I would, I would advise them is to figure out which, de which career path do they want to go down. And then from there, it's, it's very easy to kind of have an idea and a projection to where you want to be. That's good, thank you. So I think earlier we are actually answering what kind of experience from youth that is beneficial for the career. Or are we switching the question? Okay. Somebody wanted to do what you do. So, if they want to do what I do, so what we do is actually trying to uh, solve a lot of problems, uh, hard technical challenges. Um, we try to see the impact of component A on, let's say, performance. So it's a lot of problem solving. 
I would say the important quality is the ability to fail, but don't get discouraged. Because if we're doing experiments, most of the experiments that we're doing is probably going to fail before you actually find something that's working. And then another thing that's important and helpful is um, a lifelong learning behavior because with the technology, things are changing so quickly and so fast. Uh, how I used to do it five years ago is probably not how we do it now. So just the flexibility and ability to keep on learning. So please find something that, again, you're interested in doing, you're willing to put in a lot of hard work, um, and then see where it's going to take you. Um, so when I was a teenager, besides my nose always being in a book, I loved to do logic puzzles. And that was one thing that sort of was a clue to what kind of things I was interested in. Um, but I was also like fascinated by anatomy and biological sciences. And so I'm saying that because, you know, what I did was talk to people in the field I was interested in. And all along the way, that's led me in various different directions. And I've had a lot of really interesting experiences. But if you asked me when I was a teenager what I wanted to be, it had nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. And I worried so much along the way about what's the right thing, what's the best thing that I should be doing. Um, but you find it as you go. So I would say the, the strongest piece of advice that helped me is there's no substitute for talking to someone who's doing the job that you're interested in and find out what it's like for them. You know, what do you actually spend your day doing? What are the parts of your job you love? What are the things that are really challenging? What kind of people are really successful with this job? So what I wanted to do, you know, in high school, I wanted to be a surgeon. And I actually met a surgeon who was willing to bring me in to observe some of his work. And, um, you know, it turned out that I faint as soon as I see blood. So I, that wasn't the direction that I ended up going. But that kind of thing kept me um, progressing in my understanding. It was almost like, here's the whole field of things I'm interested in, and I'll just narrow it down a little more and narrow it down a little more and just um, keep getting these cool experiences. So teaching was a way that I ended up in law school. It's not a straight path that you would think of, but rather than asking yourself, you know, what is my end point and what is my perfect path to get there, I would say talk to people doing it and then try it. Try going, if you think that you're interested in law, for instance, Try getting an internship at a law firm and just get your hands dirty with it. Like, see what that feels like um, before you commit to law school. So that's that's helped a lot of people um, decide if law is best for them. Yes. So on. Yeah, I think what you answered would really resonated with me because. Um, Data science, a lot of people go directly into it, and I did not do that. Uh, when I was a teenager, I, I knew I really loved math. I was one of the best math person in my class, so I knew this is the field I want to go in. Uh, but I didn't know what that means or what job that would be. When I, uh, then I did my bachelor's in computer science and engineering. I did Java coding for a couple of years for a company called TCS in India. And what I realized is you get we had business people telling us, like, write a code that would do this thing, or we want to, this is what we want to happen. They'll tell you exactly what they want to happen, and you write the code to make sure your code gives that result. And I did that for two years, and I realized, I mean, a lot of learnings, it was really good. I loved coding also, but I realized um, that we didn't know why we were writing that code. Like, I know I was writing the code. This was, the company says, we need a compiler. It should convert from this to this. I didn't know what that really means, but my job is to get it done. Uh, while I loved it, I felt like, I don't know why I'm doing it. Uh, I was missing that piece. So I wanted to get a little bit more of the business understanding. So I did my management science and engineering course to understand more of the business side. That really opened my eyes. Like you could see data being used in finance and how companies would look at the finance sheets to decide like, we need this compiler because it saves so much money or they have to make these arguments for what they want to build. 
and then how that argument wins, and that's what all the engineers are, will be working towards. So I really enjoyed that. Then I shifted towards data science, like not directly. A lot of people, if you know you want to get in that field, you might want to do bachelors in statistics or more data science field. Like if I look back, if I knew that's where I should have or done math as my bachelors, that would have been more direct path. But um, yeah, but I, I don't mind that at all. I really enjoyed computer science and coding and learning all these programming skills. Um, after that, I did my management science and joined as a business analyst and slowly grew into data science. Um, one thing, I mean, what I've learned and what I would like to say is always be open to new opportunities. Anything new comes, don't be like, I don't know this field. Like, so I'm, don't limit yourself and don't think of anything as a uh, drawback. Like, ChatGPT comes along, don't think it will take your job. How will you use it to improve what you do? So as my career has grown, we're using more coding now. Like as a data scientist, I do Python coding and build Databricks jobs and ETL, which is similar to my computer science background. So I enjoy it too. But I don't, if I'm like, I only want to do, I don't want to do this new thing, that would really limit you. Because if you have to evolve, bring in new technologies and um, grow in the field. Um, many brothers and sisters here are going to college in the next few years, so I basically want to know in, uh, how has college helped your life and changed how you view the world, and also has it influenced what you're do what you're doing currently in your job. So, what was the question? Can I repeat again? Uh, how has college like shaped your input in your life, and how is it uh, how how important is it to your job? Okay. Yeah, I think this is a jumping question, so we don't know how to reach college first. <laughs> yeah, but the one thing what college make you is that allow you to focus a particular area of your, where you're thinking for the career, right? Still high school, you're focusing everywhere, like you, you do maths, you do history, you do English, you do second language, you have to do it technically everything. But when you reach college, there is a assumption that you have some idea of what you want to be. And then college is the institute which help you to focus on that narrow area. Maybe again, it's not so narrow, still much narrow than high school, because then there are a lot more, you have to do MS to do more narrow. So I think college really help you to, and I think I see a lot of kids when they go college, they go with assumption A. They did first year and they changed to assumption B, because you don't know sometimes when you keep not trying it. So college really make you, when you out from the college, you have some good understanding what you want to do in your life. There are few percentage people still don't know and that's a we are saying, right? Don't limit yourself to say, I want to do this. If it's not happened, it's end of the life. Nothing is end of the life. Life can start any part of your life means that I keep saying my son. A lot of kids say, uh, if they are get down in one subject, they suddenly become panic and say, oh, I lost everything. Nothing is lost. What you lost is just a materialistic thing, which is one subject, right? What really you own it is your health and your career and your future which is important for you and your parents. Like I have a father of three kids. For me, they are important in anything else. So after college, you maybe have some sense on this uh, life. It's called life study, right? It's not only about study. And when you go to the companies, right? The company is a different world. They are the corporate. So there is a give and take rule there, simple, right? They will pay you because they look something inside you. So my thumb rule is, I never think my company is my home. My company is my professional work area. So you should have a bonding with your company with some limitation, but you should have bonding with your own passion more hard. Because I see a lot of people, when they reach to the right company, they start losing their passion. And every decade, every decade the industry is changing and you simply become outdated. And a lot of people have the questions, oh, we are no more valid to the market, what to do next? The problem is not the market, the problem is your skill upgrade. So I think the college is giving that idea, right? Keep changing yourself with the time, so you're always current to the market or current to your industry, right? Or your life. So that's college's learning area for me. I think how I think about college is also pretty similar. Um, 
and in terms of undergrad i see different approaches so you can choose something that's already highly specialized or you can choose something that's general and then keep on building on it um, i had the best time when i was doing phd because it's a lot of students spending a lot of time in the lab we're going to conferences we're traveling uh, we're doing road trip together so as much as the learning aspect is important the people that you meet and the people that you keep throughout your career is also important i'm still checking in with them from time to time but another thing that i want to say is learning can be anywhere any place especially these days and i'm still learning myself um, so take as much opportunities as you can to learn in many different ways maybe it's college maybe it's internship maybe it's trying to have your own business uh, but after whatever experience you try um, put some thoughts into it reflect on it and then see what learning you gain from it and how you want to take it to the next level so much wisdom here and i would just echo everything they said especially being open to all kinds of experiences that come your way for me college changed everything i grew up in the deep south in south carolina in a christian family um, when i went to college in wisconsin i met muslims for the first time i read quran for the first time i took philosophy of religion classes i took all of these different kinds of classes that i was curious about and i was not just fixated on what job i would have after college i was learning how to learn and I was learning how to think and I was relearning my relationship to my religion and finding my religious home. And Alhamdulillah, I, I joined the Dean, you know, 22 years ago um, as I was exiting college. So I also met my husband and then I, um, because after I became a Muslim, the Islamic values of service and education were so important to me. I, you know, sort of changed course and went back to law school um, so that was, I think, just transformational. And I've, you know, certainly seen lots of people go through transformational experiences in college because your, your relationship with yourself, with your Lord, with your Dean, with um, your family is all being sort of renegotiated and you're learning who you are. So your relationship to um, learning and what work means to you and what brings meaning to your life is also going to develop during that time. Um, and I think what the brother and sister have said is exactly right, that you're not really learning something to like set you on your work path and, and then forevermore you, you are on that path. It's really learning how to continually educate yourself and um, along the way you're gonna keep learning. So I guess you find where you are the most drawn to spend your time and following that um, can lead you where you won't feel like us you won't really feel like you're working all the time you'll want to and love to do what you're doing after college um, so i hope i hope that helps and i'm happy to talk to anybody i know all of us would talk to you if you have questions about like how things went for us um, anytime Maybe we should open for questions. Oh, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? So, in terms of computer science, would you say there's a, a big jump from like beginner level to, to like obviously there's a jump, but to professional level? Like, what do you have to do to get from the from interest to, to being to working professionally? as a computer scientist? Um, maybe I, I'm, I'm not, so computer science is a huge field. I think that as time goes on, the computer science, data science, engineering is like, depending on each job, it depends like how much, of, how much computer science you're using. Like I do coding in Python. I used to do Java, now it's Python. But I'm using some computer science um, from there and then uh, using data science, right? So it's slowly, it's kind of getting mixed and each job has a different mix of the three. In terms of coding specifically, I would say, I mean, for um, 
there's not a huge jump. I used to think that when I was in the coding I did in my 12th grade, for example, um, like palindrome or some, you know, I know it was more problem which would be very contained, like, you know, if it's numbers written this way, can you write it the opposite way? Like something very contained and very easy, like what when I went and I was doing Java coding at TCS and at a startup here, what they what we try to do is even if it's a big problem like my big code is um, make this whole website then they will break it into smaller pieces like one piece would be this page should show the numbers this opposite way and when it's once it's broken to that tiny level it's not very different i guess that was my experience i don't know brother show if you probably <laughs> i can add a little bit more yes. <laughs> sorry yeah so i think what Chester said is perfect, right? My experience is make your foundation core first. I can tell you programming is nothing more than putting pieces together. And what world is missing right now, as, as we are keep repeating world Java, is a devil in the programming world. Because it takes a lot of knowledge of real programming, which I used to do when I started in Pascal. Then C++, I control everything because I know what's going on and have the system, but Java take out everything. So, but that's the way the work go, right? Because computer create computer and computer create computer. But if you really want to be always right software engineer, make your foundation clear. So whether you do computer science or not, there's something called data structure in computer world. If you are really understand that, you be beat anybody in programming because Problem is not solving the problem. Problem is how to solve the problem. And I can tell you one problem can be solved 100 way. But one solution take 10 seconds to run, while the problem take 10 milliseconds to run. The question is how you reach that 10 milliseconds because that's the way you grow and companies is value the value. In my case, the software I works, it has a billion of hit every second. The question here is not is answering it or not. This question is how fast is answering it. And you might hearing from Google, right? If you go Google search and you create your own search, the difference why Google is best because they optimize solutions. And that only come with the core knowledge of software. So before programmer, become computer engineer first. Com programming is a wrapper over the computer engine knowledge. So my suggestion is make your foundation concrete first. And foundation is related to math, so math is very important. Without math, computer cannot work. Yeah, just wanted to build confidence too. Like it's, um, it takes slow, slowly you grow, but everybody else is doing the same. So anything you are learning at school, there's also a program, it's called Useco, it's like a Olymp computing Olympiad. So if you are really into coding in Java or C++, like that's a Olympiad exam that you could look into. Any other questions? Just raise your hand and I'll come over to you. There you go. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Um, so, uh, like brother I said, like for example, math is very concrete for software engineering and any sort of coding. When you're in the, the college stage, a lot of people find it hard to see the practicality of what they're studying. Like, you know, they're studying like Johnny had five water bottles, those kind of math problems, and it's like, how am I gonna apply this? Um, and maybe you have a passion, but you're not seeing how the chemistry, the physics is gonna apply. What would you say um, for that kind of motivation and seeing the importance of what you're studying? Okay, it's a good question. So l let me rephrase my thing. When I say maths, not about maths, it's what I'm thinking about logical thinking process. So maths is one type of subject where you need logical. But math is not only subject. Bio has enough same level of knowledge, logic required to their work and the chemistry, right? So when I say math, it's not math, it's the logical thinking. So if you come with the mindset, Ki I want to solve the problem with logical way, you are good. And I can tell you, right, maths, you have geometry, algebra, then harder maths like calculus, pre-calculus, statistics, but what high school, and sad care about till geometry, right? Or algebra. They don't ask for calculus. So math is good. I think what my concept of math is: Are you are enough people who can think logically, right? And the second thing is, if you think, okay, how everybody can be logically strong, right? If you're not logically strong, be emotionally strong, because sometimes in the job, 
emotionally strong is very important because you solve logic solve the problem but logic cannot solve the issues conflicts emotion will help you there so i think you see lot of companies there is not one type of job everybody is not software engineers we have a hr department we have a employee resource department we have other thing and they are not mathematical people right but they are equally important component of the company than a, a software engineer so think cross the board software engineer is not a only job you have to do yeah i mean what i was thinking is any problem you get even if you are like oh, this is not what somebody would actually be working you're doing calculus i do use stats quite a bit actually stats is a big part of what i do but not calculus but i'm sure there are jobs out there um that might be using it even if it's a calculus problem you might not ever see it Just think like what's the best way i can solve it because you are not only learning calculus you're also building the self confidence that through any problem i can do it if you don't know how to do it who can i ask you're building that skill of when to ask even if i hate the subject how do i get really good at it you're building the self confidence that if in the future it's because it, at jobs too like i can say i do coding but then an employee who reports to me is off for a month like you have to handle all kinds of situations um and you need that confidence that no matter what gets thrown i can fix it and the emotional strength like i can fix it i've been able to even the subject i hated i did really well so you know you build a confidence in yourself and how to solve if there is a problem anything else all right assalam o alaikum so i have a question i'm like stuck if i want to go like through the engineering route if i want to do like cs but like in math i'm not like the brightest like i'm kind of like yeah i'm kind of suck at math but so i'm not sure can you guys like help me out so are you thinking if somebody is not good at math but they want to get into engineering uh huh um i can yeah i mean what i'm thinking is math so data science that piece definitely a lot of math so i'll skip all of data work but um even civil engineering or mechanical engineering needs some math maybe more geometry is uh, what would be needed there if you are okay with don't think i mean first it that sounds like that's not your strength so i would leave things that need it to be your strength but everything in engineering would need a okay level and you should not if you're like i hate it i don't want to do it then it's a problem but if you're like i'm not the best at it i can do some of it but i'm more of a 3d three dimensional pictures like how i can imagine what a bridge would look like or a dam would look like or um in mechanical if you have to build a robotic arm i can imagine what it would mean like i then you should still maybe pursue more of that field uh, but don't go all math don't hate it but maybe don't go where it has to be your strength yeah i've always like like stuff like that like fixing up opening up random stuff like fixing up microwaves and stuff like that yep so it's kind of interesting yeah that's so, mechanical civil is kind of uh, in the same and computer science is computer science engineering or computer science is the hardest thing to get in so any engineering route or so mechanical is a really i, I think that's very critical and really important but so anything you learn like give some tips how to get admitted <laughs> <laughs> okay so first thing if you really committed yourself to cs then don't commit for particular college open your mind for any college you are in us is a lot of opportunity here and if you get somewhere don't bound to i want to only go mit something like that then once you be there and you have passion passion will pull you everything mm-hmm. i can tell you what is allow you to learn is not a college is not a professor is you mm-hmm. so if you really want to be cs join any cs i i think there are lot of colleges here i mm-hmm. because yeah. my son joined purdue two years before for computer engineering but i always telling him don't bound to the college if you get something is good but what you want that make sure like if you like cs then don't drop the ball because you not get admitted college in reputed way go for where you want to learn and the uh, one thing which is very important for all these colleges is profiling so if any questions we can talk offline because there are lot of small small tips you can do which college is really looking for mm-hmm. for making a profile which you can easily do but we just don't know about it okay all right thank you guys
Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have a question about like uh, practicing your religion in like strict work environments. Like, are there any specific challenges you've faced before? I think everybody can. This is common for Yeah, I, I want to just say, as a lawyer, you have the legal right um, to do your prayers and have accommodations in your workplace. So for sure, if you do hit you know, any snags, you can always get help um, with that. But you know, obviously, we're going to come across situations where I'm the only Muslim and people don't have understanding. So it's ignorance. It's mostly just like, People may not have any negative towards it, but they're neutral because they have no information to go off of. Or they may only have a negative impression because they only got some kind of Hollywood introduction to what it is to be a Muslim. It is such a blessing and a gift to be the, the Muslim that somebody meets. It's a big responsibility. But I always love when I'm in a situation and somebody realizes for the first time that they're talking to a Muslim because they've already known you. They've they've gotten to see that you're a human. You're you love your family. You're a normal person with like you know maybe some good qualities. Inshallah, you you've made a good impression or you they have some positive association with you. When they realize, oh, I know a Muslim. That is so powerful. So that's a really great aspect of being able to represent that in your workplace. But you asked about problems. Have we had problems? No, I've been in law firms. I don't. I can't remember ever working with another Muslim, to be honest with you. Because in Wisconsin, it's it's a lot fewer of us, and um, in California, I've also been in you know situations where like they're just smaller offices and they haven't um, got a very diverse group. So usually, I don't make it like a big public deal, but I always uh, request from my my HR or whoever is in charge, like I need to have a private space. Um, and usually there's a wellness room or a lactation room or some place that they can offer you that has a door that's that closes so you can do your prayers. And um, you don't you don't have to announce it. You just like slip over and do it just like you would take a restroom break or whatever. Um, I've never had any problems with that. I have had people walk in on me. And it was no problem. It's, it's just a chance for them to be curious about like what that is. And again, those little moments of, oh, I know a Muslim. That's a Muslim? OK. Muslims can look like anything, right? Um, so that's, that's as much as I'll say, because I want to let other people speak too. But you have the right. So um, it's always great to go in positive. But if anything goes wrong, you can also get legal help. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I think being visibly Muslim in grad school, uh, at work, at conferences, it's interesting. But I guess if we have peace within us to, to go and do it and have the confidence, I think that's okay too. Another thing that you mentioned about, you know, um, giving opportunities for people to know um, Muslims. so. This Monday, I just hired um, an Israeli into the group. Um, and I have like another Jewish person too in the group. I mean, it's not something that we um, discuss, the conflict and everything. But one thing that I hope is hopefully, hopefully, um, I would be a good example for them. Um, I don't think it's okay to, to you know, ask them how their views are or this or that, but hopefully their positive experience interacting with Muslim would bring positive change um, one way or another. But I do have to say it's a lot easier because of the fact that they work for me and not the other way around. So we'll see how it goes. Um. For my case, let's see. If somebody really take religion things in the workplace, I will say they are not educated. Education teach first thing workplace is for work, not for discussing religion. But if you really want your co company help you, there's a very easy way. Do little more for the company to get little more back from the company. 
So I can tell you very simple thing. If your office time is 9, 9 to 5, and you want to take half hour break in for namaz, go 8.30. Because they are the people, they don't want to hurt you. Because if they hurt you, you hurt them. This is a human nature, right? So if you want, do if they want, they help you a step ahead, work a step ahead for them, and problem will solve. I know I, was, I see people have some issues, but I see always problems solved by mutual agreements. And we are not here to fight, we are here to convince. So I think it's easy. I think I, for my life at least I never see anybody do this. And as my sister said, right? If you do right way, you becoming an example for other people. And that's the way you spread the goodness, right? Goodness is spreaded by the good work, not by the fight. And I, and I don't need to repeat that. We are already proven ourselves. We are the, one of the kind people in the world. Muslims are the kindest people in the world. People know it. Just they need some example to accept it. I think very, very good ideas spoken here. Just one, I mean, I have not experienced any negative feeling from people once they know. So maybe the people I work with or the companies or where you work and you bring in. Um, everybody's so different from different countries, different religion, everything is different. And we are very open in general. People are open to new ideas. Um, in data science, like one, one thing I really enjoy about it, it's very interesting to see how they, because you're trying to profile everything, right? Like they're trying to be like, can we use address or zip codes to classify people? So it's, I feel like over time in the future, you guys, as you grow up, you will be looking at like, can we profile people by, at, by attributes or by information which might be biased? So it's always interesting, something for the future to look at, like they are not discriminating based on models which look like it's all good, but it might be picking things which might actually be discriminatory. So that's a field that would get bigger in the future. Zakalakha. Can I just add one thing? So let's, let's talk about alcohol. It's a big part of a lot of workplaces and it can make us nervous or a little bit hen hesitant to go to networking events or like, I mean, we worry if we're gonna seem strange if we um, skip out on holiday parties that are arranged in places that serve alcohol, that kind of stuff. I just wanna mention that especially in my field, people drink alcohol at almost every work function. But it is becoming more and more normal and accepted and even positive to just simply say, I, I don't drink and just choose a different beverage. 20 years ago when I entered this profession, it was seen as really strange and people asked you why, which is rude. <laughs> but now it is, you know, it's common for health reasons. It's common for various reasons and people are becoming aware that it's, um, it's much better not to drink. So usually, I'm not the only one, there's other people who feel grateful that they have a buddy who's not having alcohol. And you don't have to say why if you don't want to. Um, so it's becoming much more accepted and natural. Uh, and in college, it's a whole different thing. I don't, you'll have to figure out the peer thing with that. But in terms of worrying about whether you can go into a field where people drink as a social thing, I would say don't worry about it. It's becoming kind of outdated. So one thing that I'd like to add, um, as a group, we go for boba a lot. <laughs> so they know Santi likes boba a lot. <laughs> That's also an option. It's always the coffee for me. <laughs> Any other questions? Sisters have been pretty quiet. Does anyone want to raise their hand and be brave? No? God, the brothers are hogging the horn. Usually they're the quiet ones, the brothers. Surprised. All right, I think we answered everything. <clears throat> Because no question comes from the sisters, right? I want to give answer for non-asked questions. <laughs> so I think first thing I want to make sure the industry, I think is becoming equivalent, more women driven too. So I just said one thing, right? Logical and emotional strength. And these are very much, we've seen that emotional strengths are more in girls than the boys. So I'm seeing like my case, in my group, we have a three managers are our women. I'm the only man. And one of the reason is, somehow they said women are much better to manage. I think it's proven in home too, right? So, 
please ask question if you have anything we are here to help you don't hold question for okay how to ask this if you have anything we are here for your career growth so i just want to promote let anybody knows because if you if the question is not answered it mislead you wrong direction yeah i mean yeah just just to answer i know there's no question but as a woman i feel in workplace i'm really glad to be working um so yeah it's really i'm um, you're a better mother if you're a working mother maybe one question that, that i had oh, <laughs> oh, I he oh he's got a question yeah, I just because i'm please so what is the benefit of work if you if you're a woman and know the some industry how is helpful to your kids hmm. i think it helps a lot like i feel i you know even though my kids don't think i can help them with math they know that i can do it better than them um so it's like you can help with math or science or coding any advice like that i i feel like i'm learning every day too self if i was uh, i mean nothing against being a at home mom is a lot of work it's a lot of responsibility and a lot of work but for me being able to work i feel i'm seeing what's happening in the world i can give better advice um i have problems to solve like i have problems at home also but then in addition i have like oh this company is not doing well or what should this other company do like you are taking some of your brain power to actually think about work problems and then you have to convince other people to think like you are thinking so you develop these other skills of working with other adults and you can you know sometimes i come home and i ask like this is a problem at work what should we do you know so the kid can also think a little bit um on a different level not just uh you know you can just i think women mothers just bring in a different angle with the boy with the kids so you can uh, open the eyes in other ways than a father would i feel men do it slightly differently women would be more open and share more and bring more so uh, i think it you become better you want to can you and i'm here okay okay i think one thing that i want to add is based on personal experience I would say stay at home mom is a much 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 harder job than um working mom. Um when my kids were young, I couldn't even go to the restroom. It's like 24/7 non-stop. So for all of you guys that's doing that mashallah mashallah may Allah reward you. At work we're working with adults. At least I can go to the restroom. <laughs> that's not an issue. um and these days you know the boundaries is becoming more flexible you can work at home you can work at the office you can work wherever you are one thing that i want to add is just keep on learning i think if there is one do i think that the prophet was being told to us is increase me knowledge which means that is something that we have to do until the day we die and you don't have to work outside to keep on learning so I think that's what I want to say. So the um hadith I'm not going to quote it cuz I don't I don't have it memorized but that we are supposed to go to the end of the earth or to China the furthest furthest place in search of knowledge this is a duty on every muslim so agreed it doesn't have to take one form or another but I will say that um my husband deserves a lot of credit because I I thought that women had to be a stay-at-home mom because in my tradition in my family there weren't any women who went to um get a masters or a a professional degree after they're a mom it just wasn't done um and I know like maybe you think in America that's different but our culture has lots of different pockets um so religiously I was taught that that wasn't right so when When I married my husband and then um I ended up in law school before we became parents we were just praying ya Allah for the right timing for a child and we we were surprised by um you know my daughter was actually born during law school so I just have to share that I mean you know, I immediately assumed that I had to quit law school and that I was going to be a stay-at-home mom and my family 
expected that from me. But my husband and his Muslim family were like, please don't quit law school. Um, you would regret it. And you know, the, the Muslim ummah needs Muslimas in this field. The, you know, the, the community needs um, what you're planning to do. So we want to support that. How can we support you? And Alhamdulillah, I just feel like that was the right decision, but um, it took that encouragement and that strong support from my husband. Um, and I'm still emotional about that because I think it changed my life. Um, so there isn't one right way. My mother is still very happy that she chose to be a stay-at-home mom. And I am too, because she's a wonderful mom. Um, but the world is changing and the world has so many needs. The community has so many needs. And we do have that obligation to keep learning, growing, and trying to share as much as we can with our communities in whatever shape that, that looks like for you. But I think I want to give some credits to my wife too. So, <laughs> so as a successful man, right, I can tell you, you cannot be alone. So either you're a working woman or home wife, they are responsible for man growth. And then your next generation, because I think Kids see their father as outside helper when they go for tournaments, activity, or sports. But I think the, the word called parvarish is come from mother, right? So whatever you can do, and that is the core. If your kid is get brown and bought nicely, I think he never need to worry about anything in life. Money cannot solve that problem. Only the attitude solve the problem. And that come from mother. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, there's food outside, so I think that's what we're going to do next. Uh, thank you.